Yep, you're on. All right. Right. So um, I'm just coming from a workout and I just got home from vacation, four babies in four days. So bear with me as I threw this information together. Luckily, I am. Um, let me back up. We're going to talk about um, breastfeeding and um, the health and oils you can use um, to help milk production, to help in the beginning for dry, dry cracked, and sore nipples. Um, we're also going to to help prevent any infections or clock, clogged ducts, or if we do get to that point, what we can do to um, solidify that. So anyway, um, breastfeeding, um, a lot of women, you, if women, if you are in the group and you're a woman and you've had a baby and you breastfed or tried to breastfeed or bottle feed, this is not anything about judgment with breastfeeding. This is all just about care and health. Um, so I don't want um, there to be any of that because I um, and we go to breastfeed and our motto is that is best whether bottle um, exclusively for breast milk or uh, the world calls it artificial breast milk or formula. So no judgment. I don't want there to be anyone to feel that way in this conversation. So um, breastfeeding, if you've breastfed a child before or tried, it is not the easiest gig in the world. Um, it is difficult. Um, it is um, in the beginning, especially that first two weeks of life, it's very important that that baby is fed up to 15 times a day. And as you know, sometimes that can be a two hour feed, a 15 minute feed, a three hour feed, um, or that feed can be last a half hour, you put the baby down and 10 minutes later, you're feeding again for another hour. So um, very frustrating in the beginning. Um, so breast milk, what I wanna talk about real quick is just the composition of it. There's minerals, vitamins, fats, carbs, proteins, and water. And it's also made up of anti-allergens, anti-parasitic, antiviral, antibacterial, it sounds a little familiar to our oils, doesn't it? If we could <laughs> put breast milk in an oil, wouldn't that be awesome? Um, hormones, enzymes, and there's approximately over 300 other factors in breast milk that we don't even know about that we can't get into formula. So I always say it's like the deep blue ocean. There's so many things that are, um, haven't been found yet um, and we're still searching and that is the same thing with breast milk. Um, so in the beginning, um, right after you have your baby, there is a hormone release that is um, oxytocin and um, that one, oh, let's see, it totally slipped my mind, it starts with a P. I am a certified lactation educator counselor and that hormone, um, pro, pro, prolactin, sorry, prolactin is released that also helps um, tell your body that it's time to feed your baby. Um, in the early days, um, that first few days, um, the yellow, thick, gooey um, milk that is um, from your breast is called colostrum. Now that colostrum is really important for your baby to get. If you don't even plan on breastfeeding, we highly recommend that you at least either pump to get colostrum or at least get baby on to get that colostrum. Because what that does is, A, it gets your baby to suck, whether it's from the breast or the bottle, because that helps align baby's jaw, the fontanelles, because um, they can't, whether it's a C-section or a vaginal delivery, um, their head goes through a lot. So it's that sucking um, motion and sensation that they um, do automatically that helps put that and align everything back up. So the colostrum, it's thick and it's gooey and it's great. And it's thick because it makes baby work at sucking. So it, the, naturally. That's why it was put there. It also coats baby's stomach. If you remember, um, babies have this awesome poop in the beginning called meconium, which is tar and thick. And so that colostrum acts like a laxative in the baby's tummy, coating it and getting that um, meconium out. And we want that meconium to get out of baby's system. Um, I won't go into the whole reason behind meconium. That's a whole nother, but so anyway, it helps baby poop. Um, helps baby's jawline, and it helps you practice and baby practice on the proper way to latch and um, for nursing. So we get through the colostrum. Um, your baby's tummy is the size of a, a cherry pit when they're first born. So um, a lot of the times um, 
just enough of that teaspoon of colostrum is enough for baby in the first 24 hours. But we encourage breastfeeding every two hours for the first two weeks, just because we want your milk volume to increase and we want baby to pee and poop and get their system going. So I'm sure that if you've breastfed before or you have friends that have breastfed um, or been in a community of breastfeeders, I'm sure you've heard a couple times, well, I just couldn't breastfeed. I just didn't have the milk. Um, there's a few reasons there could be. One is breast augmentation. If they've had a breast augmentation before babies, it is very difficult to breastfeed. Um, it, um, and there's reasons behind it. Um, and then there's also certain medications and it's usually for uh, people that are, have had cancer um, and other um, long-term <clears throat> diseases. But other than that, it's less than 3% of the population that absolutely cannot breastfeed. Usually why women say they can't breastfeed is out of frustration in the middle of the night, those first two weeks, and um, not getting the proper support. And then the other piece is, is latch, the latch. I recommend that you continue with your vitamins, um, continue with the vitamins, continue with the extra omega-3s, the doTERRA omega-3s. If, oh, did I pop off? Am I still on? To continue with the omega-3s um, to help with the increase. Um, it's just really important to keep your diet um, healthy. Again, increase your calories by 500 um, calories. Really red, um, green leafy um, vegetables, a lot of salads really help um, with the breastfeeding. The other two um, oils that are my go-to and actually we just automatically give our breastfeeding clients a small little sample of both of them is basically um, out of the two, um, Sam just walked by. <laughs> out of the two, um, I've seen more success with fennel. Um, and I, it's something about that licorice smell that um, I think postpartum women might, might like for some reason. I'm not quite sure. I maybe need to research that if it's something with the change of hormones. Um, but they really like that fennel -y smell. So anyway. But those two um, oils are absolute go-to. Now, when we're using it to help with the milk volume, we rub it around the breast. We don't put it directly on the nipple um, because if baby gets hungry, we don't want baby tasting um, the fennel or basil. And we always, always, always dilute it because if you do end up having to feed the baby right away, um, I'm sure it would be fine, but dilution is always just the safest way when you're um, breastfeeding. Um, also, um, another, if we're having a milk volume um, issue, I really ask them what kind of shampoo are they using um, in the home they're diffusing. And a lot of the time they'll say, oh yeah, well, I love peppermint because of nausea or I need it to um, boost my energy. Well, peppermint can be the proponent of um, your milk volume decrease. Um, it can dry, it can actually um, dry up milk or lower your volume. Um, and again, everyone's different, so this isn't with every woman, but if we see that there is a decline and there's no reason behind it, I always ask, because shampoos have peppermint in it, body lotions have peppermint in it, um, if they're diffusing it for energy, if they have a roller ball for energy, so we ask that they eliminate peppermint and increase their fennel or basil oil. And they can also put it in a capsule and take it orally. It's very safe. And then we usually see an increase. Um, and then, um, so peppermint can be a proponent of um, a decrease in milk volume. Anyway, um, so we do see increase with the fennel and basil. Um, and again, dilute, rub it on the breast tissue, not the nipple. Um, next, um, again, vitamins are very important and um, continuing that regimen. Um, the other big one with breastfeeding is um, the dry, cracked, um, and sometimes bleeding nipples um, can be very painful. It's very uncomfortable, especially um, in the beginning. And a lot of that has to do with latch. Um, and if you're a first time and 
um, you've never breastfed before. So it's pretty common and it's totally normal for the first week to 10 days, up to two weeks, if you have some discomfort in breastfeeding. Um, that discomfort should dissipate as baby continues um, to feed. If you do not see um, the pain dissipating after baby's been latched on after a couple um, stops, we need to um, relatch baby, get baby off the breast and look at the latch and um, reposition and get the latch better. But if it's just the normal dry cracked um, from just the normal breastfeeding, um, some great tips for that are, um, is taking the fractionated coconut oil, putting it on the nipples. Um, if we don't see a change with just the fractionated coconut oil, I think lavender is a great one, geranium, myrrh, and frankincense, and always, always dilute again, and always air dry, always air dry after breastfeeding. Another great um, tip is if you are out and you don't have your oils with you, you should have your oils with you, but if you don't have your oils with you or you're at someone's home or in the car and you can't reach it, just rub a little of your own breast milk on the nipples and let them air dry. Um, breast milk, I, like I said, I wish we could bottle that <laughs> and sell it. It is a great um, tool for healing also. But um, lavender, myrrh, geranium, and frankincense are great for those cracked nipples. So um, next we're gonna talk about um, clogged ducts, which um, majority of women that breastfeed might get one or two. And really the best way to get rid of clogged ducts um, is to change the position of baby um, nursing. So if you're used to nursing baby in a cradle, um, cross cradle, you may want to do football fold or even um, lay down and do sideline or lay down and have baby breastfeed from your shoulder over. It's just to get different, um, get that duct in a different position and get baby sucking from a different position. And usually those can be um, unclogged that way. Also, you want to massage that duct while baby is feeding and that will help eliminate it. If we get past um, just a clogged duct and we get to the point of um, where the duct is clogged, it's red, it's hot, there's a line, um, we're entering into a serious, um, it's called mastitis, and um, it can be pretty serious for your health. You end up with flu-like symptoms, but hopefully um, with, before we see that with the small duct, um, clogged ducts, um, massaging your breast in after these feedings and using um, the coconut, um, unfractionated coconut oil, lavender, um, geranium again. Um, frankincense is my favorite to go to for this. It really seems to soothe and help. So um, using that as soon as you have a clogged deck can help eliminate mastitis, but sometimes mastitis can come in the middle of the night out of nowhere. Um, I highly suggest calling the provider immediately, getting in massaging, using the frank, using the lavender, anything that, and actually I would go with anything that is intuitively feeling great for that area. Um, so that is um, what we recommend with our clients when they have a clogged duct, when they have mastitis. Um, also, um, if they can't get into the provider right away, which we usually don't have that, is if they do have a fever, we recommend um, a little bit of peppermint on the back of their neck and forehead. Um, I know we said no peppermint for breastfeeding, but if you have a fever, peppermint will hold you over until you can see your provider for the infection. Um, that is about it with the breastfeeding piece. Um, I could talk hours and hours about it. Um, we could talk about the physiology of it. We could talk about, um, just so many different things about breastfeeding, but I wanted to make it short and sweet. Um, and the oils to use, um, these are, again, I'm gonna go over fennel basil for milk volume, um, lavender, myrrh, geranium, frankincense for any ailments on the breast. Um, also, um, uh, peppermint if you have a fever um, and need to see your provider. But other than that, those are the main oils we use with our clients for breastfeeding. And we've had huge success again. It seems like fennel seems to be the, our real go-to, but we give them both. So um, thank you, Sharon, for having me. Thank you, everyone. And please let me know if you have any questions. And I have a great little um, photo that I'm going to send to um, Sharon for Renee, I think that can, she can put on the website.
expert on the Facebook page for us. Awesome. Um, Stacy, I, yeah. I remember I used to crave black licorice all the time. So this was pre doTERRA. Every single baby, I would crave black licorice. And um, I could never figure out why. Well, when we started the oils, <clears throat> and, um, and, you know, I mean, we've been using them for forever, but I hadn't gotten into, like, all the ins and outs because right. I only use eucalyptus and, and lavender. But once I got Ezra and Micah, I started doing research on it because it was so incredible that mm -hmm. I could do this. And so what I found with fennel is that um, fennel actually regulates hormones. That's yeah. what it is. Yes. Yeah. So that is why so often, you know, like I would have fennel salad. I, I would just, I mean, anything I could get with fennel in it, I was so happy. And I didn't want to eat, you know, black licorice because it's so right. high in sugar. Right. But, um, and, and decrease your milk supply. Right? So we want to make sure that we are eating really good food. So that, that I, I lived on fennel when I had Right. It it's was, very, right. I've even, I've even, um, if you've ever had, you know, if you've had um, labor before, and a lot of times women get very herpy and burpy and nausea and they vomit, and and the nurses are always like, oh, do you have peppermint? Oh. Fennel. It seems to soothe them through that spike hormones. Yeah, it's, it's a hormone-driven oil that I love, and it and it helps. And that is why, that is exactly why when they're breastfeeding, they're like, "Oh my gosh, this smells so wonderful! I love this! I love having it!" So yeah. it makes total sense. Yeah. Awesome. Um, one more quick question that came up for me. I've got two of them. One was hilichrysum on the nipples. Wouldn't that be a good thing to to use? to help repair the skin. Yes. Yep. That's another one also. I, I'm sorry. I just did quick notes this morning. Um, yeah, that's another great one. Helichrysum is my go-to for owies, bumps, bruises, cuts, all that. Um, absolutely. I, 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 yeah. Yep. Good one. I just didn't know if you had any experience with it or not. I, just, well, I, I think, um, we're pretty good at making sure that our clients don't get to the point of really needing deep repair for their nipples. So I think we just go to the first, you know, like the, I want to say the softer <laughs> oils, um, the lavender, yeah. um, just to help in that first. And if it does get to that point of where it's deep, usually at that point is something more than just, um, the early stages of breastfeeding, it's usually something like a lip tie. Yeah. And, and then we, we've usually have handed them over to a lactation consultant because they can diagnose. We're not able to diagnose. So, um, but absolutely help yeah. us. There'll be something we'd recommend if it was okay. deep, deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So I got mass status on um, Micah, who is our fifth baby. And I used, I was using a different company, and so I used their Spice of Life, which is similar to Thieves or On Guard, um, around my mm -hmm. breast to help the infection. So I'm wondering, with, with doTERRA, would we be able to use um, On Guard Plus internally to help fight off infection? Because sometimes if it's bad enough, they'll put you on medication. And then would we yeah. be able to use a diluted form of, of On Guard on our, you know on the breast specifically in those yeah. areas that are inflamed nasty yeah. the only yeah and again it would have to be very diluted because it is hot um and just making sure that the next time baby feeds it, it's not um it's already doing its job and on their lips or mouth that would be my only concern but absolutely yeah um actually now that you bring that up i will have to say that um, um, one of our clients, I did um, a on guard like heating. Um, did a heating? Did it? One of those things you throw in the microwave that heats up, plasticky things. And then I had on guard, and I put it in a hot washcloth around the hot pad, and we put it on her breast, under her, and we actually did it in her armpit versus right on the um, the oh. mastitis area. So okay. 
Yeah. That's a clever trick. Yeah. That's a really clever trick. Good. Okay. So, cause I was thinking, you know, with, with doTERRA's on guard touch, that would be an easy one to keep yep. in your diaper bag yep. for, because, you know, I think for me, the more babies I had, the more clogged my ducks got. Uh, and yep. for me, it was, I don't know if it was just so many successive babies. I don't, I don't know, but <laughs> a lazy nurse too, you know, yep. it just, whatever i'm walking around the kitchen and i'm going to nurse my baby you know um it, yeah. there's a lot of things that go into that so thank you so much i don't yeah. know if anybody has any more questions let's check the chat i know that um andrea mena said she used with her twins fennel to increase her milk supply and that looks like it's it if anybody yep. else has any questions they can raise their hand or we can jump off and you can yeah. Put it in the post right yes sharon kira had a question she had her hand up i'm not sure she still has a question yes go ahead it's just kind of chiming in with my own mastitis story and um it actually predated essential oils for me i still uh honestly at the time had never even heard of essential oils and certainly did not know how to use them um but with uh my fourth baby jack um, I had mastitis to the point where I had like a fever of 103 and I was wadded up in bed with, hun you know, like tons of blankets on me and, um, and my husband kept the baby for the most part, but he would bring him to me whenever he needed to nurse and um, our midwives of course told me to go to the doctor, but I was a stubborn soul and I said, I don't want to, I'm going to muscle through it. And I did. Um, but the tip that they gave me that I wanted to pass on was to remember, you know, how you were saying to um, move the position of the breastfeeding um, whenever you start to have the clogged duct. The rule that they gave me was to always point the baby's chin toward the clogged duct. That's mm -hmm. where they pull the hardest and the most, right? Because, you know, with the tongue action and everything. So just, so my duct was on the, the, the duct that was giving me a problem. That was the red streak and everything. It was bad. I was really dumb for not going to the doctor, but um, it was on the top of my breast. So I'm laying on my side with the baby's like diaper in my face, yep. you know, <laughs> with him facing <laughs> down, you know, yeah. and, um, but it was, I, exactly. And it so well it hurt like crazy while i was nursing but you know i mean it was i only i only had that wicked fever for probably about 12 to 14 hours okay. it wasn't long and the redness was gone the next day and it was it was it was magical just having him do that so that was that was a big tip if i had, had the oils i know that it would never have even gotten anywhere near that bad but um it was nice to remember the chin towards the bad duct good good rule <laughs> awesome tip yeah um, and, and I want to um, also say that is off, that she's absolutely right, chin towards a clogged duct. And also, a lot of times these clogged ducts happen when your baby starts to get those longer um, um, sleeping arrangements at night or during the day. Um, so if you see that your baby is starting to sleep six to seven to eight hours at night and then you wake up and you're feeling super engorged, um, if that continues, sometimes that is, can be the start of, um, you know, your body saying, hey, where, where's the baby? If you just self-express and just to relieve your breasts, that will also help with any clogged ducts and then clogged ducts going into mastitis, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. Beautiful. All right. Thank you, Stacy. I just, you know, Thank we you. so appreciate your first of the month. We missed you last month, so this is such a treat. Um, for those of you joining us on our replay, Stacy joins us the first Monday, uh, first Wednesday of every single month to be able to offer us tips and tricks using essential oils and the supplements within your um, pre pregnancy, pregnancy, postpartum. Um, routines as as a young mama and um or a seasoned mama is starting all over again and so we are so grateful for her expertise she's got a list of qualifications like a page long so we don't want to filter that through here but no she's super super qualified owns her own doula agency in st paul minnesota and so grateful for your time and your effort um, before we hang up, I just wanted to remind everybody the Digging for Deals, we did a video on Go Green Group. You can see everything. I, I talked about what we have, but 10% off stock up item this month is, um, is the A to Z vitamins with PB Assist Plus Junior. 
So that's an awesome time to stock up on those. 10% off um, for that, by the way. And then Lime is the free product of the month for anyone purchasing an order of 125 points before the 15th. So people ask me all the time, when do you ship? And I always ship before the 5th. So I make sure that I find out the deals and it's just easier that way so that I never <laughs> forget and nothing, you know, if something goes wrong with my credit card or shipping, you know, I don't miss out. And, um, Can I say something real quick? Please, yes, yes. So, my oldest is 22. He's He just got home. He moved to Texas for the summer, and he is addicted to the A to Z vitamins. He's like, it has, he just loves them. So, whether you're a child or an a adult, I say adult, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loves loves the vitamins and I'm getting him the pro, pro probiotics. So just so you know, it's how not just for children. He take and <laughs> how often in the day does he take them, Stacy? He, he said uh, he takes them once a day, but when he thinks about it, he takes it two or three times a day. Just okay. Yeah. Because we're in the heat and he was working outside and, but he loves them. Yeah, that is awesome. Like, okay, we'll I have a, right. Don't let go, mom. So this is a good time to stock up because you get ten percent off regular price plus your wholesale price. You know, you're already getting a massive um, kickback in that. In that, so that's really great to be able to get that, those extra rebates. Um, a lot of adults, actually, Stacy, will use these because they can't swallow pills. So the A to Z is used by a lot of adults, actually. <laughs> so, um, and then, then they put that omega-3 in their okay. smoothies or their juice and, um, and have that that way because swallowing pill isn't fun. Um, a, a reminder that tangerine is now available. It's zero PV right now. I want everybody to realize that. There's zero PV on that. It's $15. Um, but tangerine in a 15 milliliter bottle available right now as we speak. You can order it. The SKU number is working today and um, you, I, I just bought two bottles. So I want everybody to know that that is available. And I also wanted to remind everybody, Stacy brought this up in the very beginning. If you're sharing doTERRA, I'm telling you, everyone's voice is so important to this. And this month, doTERRA is giving free lifelong vitality. So what you do is you, if you're helping someone obtain their own membership, get them in with the hunt their with their hundred point order, right? Their their order needs to be a hundred points, and in September they need to build to reward order of a hundred points or higher, and then DoTerra gives them in that loyal to reward order lifelong vitality. Now, for those that didn't do digging for deals, lifelong vitality is DoTerra's flagship product. Before they had oils, they had this supplement ready to go, created by doc, um, by by um, Rob Young. I was going to call him something different, but Rob Young. And um, cutting edge science in this. And I'm telling you, he is his baby. And everything he has, knowledge-wise, scientifically, medically, everything that he's done as a science a scientist, he put into this. Um, he used to work for USANA. He was at Shackley when doTERRA invited him to join their, their, their organization and be a vice president and owner and um, co-owner. And, and it, he's brought mad. So 30 day money back guarantee on this. If you don't have more energy and less pain in 30 days, they give you your money back. So if you want to see the video on that, head on over to Go Green Group. Um, it digging for deals is right there, you guys. So anyway, thank you so much again, Stacy. Everybody who's joined us, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. We'll see right. you next week. Yep. Bye. Bye.